Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to all my mess. So I think in the last video I told you guys <laughs> I was not going to clean up my table because I was going to continue to work on another journal. So that's what I'm going to be doing today and that's why hence there's a lot of mess around me at the moment. Um, there's just no point in me packing it up and then, you know, wanting to create again. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a new journal and my new journal is going to be out of this fabric here, this beautiful, beautiful fabric. And I got this fabric in um, Brisbane. So you can see, hope you can see it okay. Put down a little bit more like this for you guys. Um, I got this fabric in Brisbane at, gosh, what was the place called? Re Reuse. Hmm. It was kind of like a place that um, recycles bits and pieces. Reverse garbage I think is what it's called. Reverse garbage in Brisbane. So this is the fabric that I found there. Now it wasn't particularly cheap surprisingly but it was just such a beautiful fabric I wanted to pick it up. So I've probably got enough to make maybe two journals out of this but I'll just do the one. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to be creating the cover or the pages I'm going to be creating the embellishments so I'm going to do things a little bit back to front than my last video uh, just to switch things up you know I like to do that sometimes um, so the past sort of couple of days I've been looking at bits and pieces that will tie in sort of nicely with this fabric now it's kind of a orangey red fabric I'm gonna kind of call it orange so I was looking at sort of orange tones that would tie in well and I wanted it to be um, a bit of a vintage style once again sort of similar to my last one um, a lot of neutral colors on the inside with pops of orange here and there or brown or even little pops of green because there is bits of green so I spent the past few days pulling bits and pieces out and sort of trying to tie, um, pull things from my stash if you will, to tie in nicely with this journal. So I'm going to pop this fabric, well yeah I'll pop it to the side here and what I've got here is a few things. I do have some stamps, I went through my stash and I pulled out some stamps here that are orange, green and brown tones. So they're the sort of tones that I want to use in my journal. So I just popped them there off my sewing machine. Um, I do have my sewing machine here with me today, guys, because I'm going to be sewing. I don't want to keep moving away from my desk. Usually it's um, over that way <laughs> on a separate desk. And I didn't want to keep moving over there today, so I put it over here. So I'll pop those aside. Then what I did is I did some stamping. I went and grabbed this gorgeous... Um, pumpkin stays on ink and it's so nice it's kind of like a um an orangey brown so sometimes you stamp orange and sometimes bits of orange and brown and sometimes more brown so it's really unusual so i grabbed some i think it was it's like a watercolor paper i think and i brushed it over with some walnut stain so I do have walnut granules and I'll bring my little jug over here it's messy but in here I did dissolve some walnut granules so it makes this beautiful walnut ink and I was brushing that over my um, watercolor paper and then I stamped over it with the um, pumpkin stays on ink so I just have a variety of images. I've got this awesome lady here that I've stamped multiple times. I've got, oh, there she is again, that's just a little piece of pattern. I've got like this hummingbird. I've got this gorgeous little flourish design. Just lots of little bits and pieces. What's this? This is a flower. On different pieces of paper as well, here's a bit of a bird. Um, just in all these sort of um, neutral tones with the orange ink. So we've got butterflies, I've got, this is a little stamp that says today is, I've got some frames, little arrows, more frames. So 
lots of pieces here that I can sort of work in with my embellishments. So I'll pop that one aside. And then over here on this plate, of course too, I'm going to be bringing in my copper staples and paper clips and things like that. So over here, let me just pull these out. What I went and did is I wanted to use some vintage photos in this next album. Now I don't have any, well I do have some authentic um, photos but you know most of my family I don't really, I don't want to use those in this journal and I do have some coming from the US at the moment but they're going to be about another three weeks away. So what I thought I would do and this, I thought this is kind of um, handy for people who don't have authentic vintage photos or who don't want to use authentic photos in their journals as I went onto the public domain and I downloaded a bunch of free vintage photos I think there's some there's some advertising for photos in here and some postcards as well and I took them down to my local store which was Kmart who do printing and things like that and I put the images into like a sheet it's kind of like I think they call it mini prints and it's kind of like a collage so you get a 6x4 sheet of paper and they divide it into four and you can put four little photos in there and you can do that for 10 cents a sheet if you order the day before and pick it up the next day or 20 cents a sheet if you want to do it instant so I did mine instant because I'm impatient like that and so this bunch of photos here I grabbed for only two dollars and now I've got a bunch of these vintage photos that I can use all throughout this journal and I don't feel bad about using them because they're not authentic ones but they're they're very similar in the fact that they're printed on photo paper you know and yeah I just thought that'd be um, fun to sort of use here and there throughout the journal most of them are landmarks sort of and they are in Queensland so yeah I think there's a couple in Sydney but most of these are places in Queensland so just have a look and then some of them here are like vintage advertising that I did so you can see it's printed nicely and I use the um, satin not glossy um, option because I didn't want them to look glossy <laughs> and so here you go this was something to do with the British monarchy I don't know if you can see that very well if it focuses so that one and then lots of sort of old um, towns like that and I thought they're quite fun and sort of people but there are some that are people there's this one here which is it says Melbourne Street Bowen Bowen's in Queen is it in Queensland I think it might be so there's some people there but mostly just sort of landmarks this is a coal mine some horses this one here is like a schoolyard I think so lots of fun and then there are some sort of postcards pieces so I thought I'll use these definitely on um, embellishments here and there. So yeah it's sort of a, a cool idea for you guys that don't want to use you know authentic vintage photos. So I've got a pile of those and then what I did is I went to find some scrapbooking paper that I wanted to use in this journal. I didn't want to use too much scrapbooking paper, um, just sort of tones of it here and there. Uh, so I didn't have any large sheets, but I did find a smaller pad that I had, which is a six and a half inch paper pad, and it's called Miss Empire. And I've had this for at least three years, <laughs> just sitting in a box. And I grabbed it from Kaisercraft. They had a um, Kaiser Craft store down here that was uh, like an outlet, so things were really quite cheap. So I don't think this was five dollars. I think it was on special. Um, so yeah, I looked through this, and there's sort of some nice vintage tones that I think will tie in quite nicely. That these are it's kind of shimmery that one, but those are corsets. Um, nice orange tones that will tie in quite nicely with the journal. So just plain orange there. This one here is really nice. And that one. So I'm going to use um, bits and pieces of this paper. I'm going to tea stain it though. So I haven't done that yet. Um, but I will tea stain it and pop that throughout the journal. But because I knew I was going to use this paper pad. 
I went ahead and I made a few little dies. This is just some of that lace that I want to use as well. Oh, and Tim Holtz people, if I want to use some Tim Holtz people. So I used the same paper pad and I began to make some dies, just little ones here and there that I thought will tie in quite nicely with embellishments. If you can see that one, okay. There. We've got little flowers that would go something like, I think those are like layered up ones, but I don't really like the way that one looks. I've got butterflies, I've got little sort of, I'm not sure what you'd call these. I have got, let me have a look, oh that's another butterfly. I'm trying to think what's going to go nicely with that when it's layered up. Maybe that and then orange, I'm thinking. Oh, that might be quite nice. These are all flowers. So I think they're all tying quite nicely. Then I did a couple of stamps. This one doesn't stamp so well, but I'm still going to use them because I kind of like that um, faded look. So some roses, some frames. So lots of little bits and pieces here that I'm going to be able to use that will tie in nicely so that's what I'm going to do today guys I'm going to sit here oh and I made these little envelopes which I thought was quite sweet I've had this die for a wee while but I haven't used it so I'm going to sit here today guys and I'm going to create some embellishments I'm sort of surrounded by a lot of stuff so I'm hoping it doesn't hinder the process because typically when I've got a lot of stuff surrounding me I, I can't think clearly and I don't do such a good job of, of creating then so it's quite quiet today but I do have my kitties at home but what I might do is I might just sit here and play on this small little <laughs> piece that I've got here and I'll pop over to my sewing machine so I might just pop some music on for you guys um, just so I can sort of sit and concentrate a little bit better and you guys don't have to hear the clunking of my machine but when I'm done sort of creating I'll come back and we'll have a look through all of the embellishments together so I will chat to you again at the end of the video guys
Alrighty guys, so I'm going to stop the video there because um, I don't want to go for too long. Um, but this is probably going to be just part one because I do want to continue making some things. So I'll stop this part here and I will upload it to you guys and then the next one I do will probably come tomorrow. But I thought I'd just quickly go over some of the things I've made um, on camera. Um, some are quite simple. But I, I just, I'm having a lot of fun right now, so I definitely just want to keep going. So the first piece I've made here is a very simple. I'm going to grab a book just so I can um, use it as an example. Hang on a minute, guys. Let's bring over, let's bring over this one that I made the other day. But we're just um, going to use the plain pages in it to show you. What's that sort of going to look like? Let me find a plain page. It's got to be one in here somewhere, right? Hang on. Oh, goodness. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> I think. Okay, we're just going to use this one here <laughs> as an example. Okay, so you got your plain page here and this piece I thought would look nice if you wanted to make it into a belly band um, you could pop it along there and I would just like sew down there and trim off the excess or if you wanted it to go this way it can go nice um, either way so what I've done there is it's just some tea stained paper and then it's layered so there's a piece of fabric and then a piece of this netting and then some of those little flower die cuts. So it's just a simple piece, but it's quite effective, especially if you just wanted to pop it on the side of the page like that. And maybe even if you sewed a little bit up the top there, it might be a little bit of a side tuck if you wanted it to be. So that is the first piece. The second piece here is um, a tag, which I did. Um, I couldn't find my hole punch for the life of me. I went off camera and tried to find it. <laughs> I've, really, I've misplaced it, so I sort of just poked um, through the paper there. <laughs> As you can see, it's probably a bit messy, but I just um, backed this tag with some Russian paper that I had from this very awesome book. I love this book. It's um, Russian Reader. And then there's a vintage ticket. Yeah, this is a real vintage ticket. There's some of the photo. I just cut it off at the side there an orange stamp, um, a little orange die cut and a little bit of vintage lace and then it's just topped with some netting so there's a nice little tag there. The next piece I've got here, it's kind of interesting, I really enjoyed making this one and I think you know in the next part I'm not only going to make one type of the things that I'm doing here, I'm going to make several. Um, it's probably going to be quite a chunky one the next one guys but I just want to have fun with it so let me just find a blank piece of paper again. Hang on a minute, guys. Yeah, if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So these pieces here are designed for me to be able to just decorate up a page. So I can have it up the top there. And this gorgeous little butterfly here can pop out the top. And then it can flip open like that. And you can write in here or pop something in here, right here down here, pop a photo if you wanted to put a, a nice photo down there or something like that. So that's how this one is designed to work and I'm I'm really loving this. I'm definitely going to make it again. So it's got your nice sort of, um, this is such a vintage piece of paper at the back here. It's from a book, grab it. It's called, it's a, hmm, English words and phrases, sorry. And um, the papers are so fragile and thin, you guys, but it's just so patinaed, so there's just a lot of pages there to use, and I'm going to be using lots of them. But as you can see there, it kind of ripped, and I just ripped it off, but I think it looks really nice. And so that is that piece. The next piece is just a little embellishment piece with those vintage photos. Once again, if you wanted to. You could pop it down the bottom here and sew and it could be a little side pocket or it could be, we could pop it up here and you could have the tag sticking out the top and you could have it as a little tuck or just as plain um, embellishment. 
Sorry guys, I think my uh, video is flashing at me. I'm not sure if it's running out of storage, but I apologize if it shuts off. The next piece is a little booklet that I've made here, and it's designed to sort of glue. You glue this piece on the back along with this uh, piece of twine here. And it's going to open up on a page. I just decorated it here at the front. And it's just got some plain sort of pages through it. So that's going to be a fun piece to attach um, on the middle of a page like that. And then the next piece is designed also just to lay on a page like so. And I think this is beautiful. There's a tiny little piece of fabric I have here at the bottom, which you can use as a pocket if you wanted to. So you could pop something in there. It's a very shallow pocket, but I kind of thought a photo would go nicely. Um, let me have a look. I'm going to grab a photo of my grandma. My beautiful, beautiful grandma. So you could pop a photo, even if you wanted to pop it under that paper clip there, or just glue it in the middle like that. So it's designed to just sit on the page there, so you've got your embellishment piece all ready. Alright guys, I'm going to have to go. I think this is flashing at me, but I will be back soon with um, part two. And I hope you enjoyed this little embellishment video for uh, my next journal. But I will speak to you very soon, guys. Bye!